Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we are going to be finding out what happens if Arthur collects all of the legendary fish instead of John Marston. So we did something similar to this a couple of months ago where I actually showed you guys what happened if Arthur turned in all of the dinosaur bones to Deborah McGinnis instead of John Marston, and there was different lines of dialogue both for Arthur and Deborah. Because when Deborah came as John, there was a unique interaction where they discussed Arthur's death, which clearly wouldn't happen if Arthur was the guy talking to her. So I found that to be very interesting, and it turns out that something very interesting occurs if you do the same thing while talking to Jeremy Gill, the guy who sends you on the Legendary Fish mission. Now, in case you have no idea who Jeremy Gill is, after the chapter two mission, A Fisher of Men, you can talk to him on his little house dock area on the Flat Iron Lake. It's a mission called A Fisher of Fish. You can start this as either Arthur or John. So this part doesn't matter, but it gives you a better idea on who we're dealing with today. Hey. Ah, ah, God. Hello, chum. Chum? Do you want an autograph? Or a photograph? I'm sorry? People often get nervous, but there's really no need to. I, I'm just a, just a normal guy who, well, happens to be very famous. Okay. Who are you? Jeremy Gill. Who? The famous fisherman. I've written a lot of books. I'm in the newspaper all the time. Here's one from the New Hanover Gazette from a few years back. And this is a book I wrote. Huh? I wrote it. Good for you. You really don't know who I am? Ah. Oh, well. <sighs> nice to meet you. You too, Arthur. Yeah. Sure you don't want a photo? Uh, not right now. Oh. You know, mothers, they often offer me their daughters. Just for a photograph? <laughs> no, to marry. But I say no. I'm married to the fish. Oh. So you're famous for fishing? Very. And that pays well? Uh, pretty well. What I mostly do is send fans stuffed fish. Stuffed fish? Yeah. Here, let me show you. Come with me. <laughs> and you're selling these? Yes. How many do you want? If you get three, we could do a photograph together, like actual friends. No, I'm fine. It's, it's sort of ridiculous. Listen, jump. People love it. And I could sell even more fish if I add them. <laughs> it helps them to know that out there, there's some man fighting with Neptune on a daily basis and winning. Okay. But I can't catch enough of them. And there's really good money in this. I'll fish a little. You do? Well, in that case, send them to me. Uh, of course, uh, not if they're too rotten. Do you like that bass? I'd sell this for $50. I'd give you 15 Send you fish. Ooh, my card and a map. Oh, well, maybe a shell. <laughs> Only the decent ones. They have to be at least 24 inches in length and 10 pounds in weight. No one wants to imagine Jeremy Gill catching a tiddler. There's no money in tiddlers. So I hear. Okay, so that right there is Jeremy Gill. Now, why is this significant? Why is it significant that Arthur turn in all of the legendary fish instead of John Marston? Well, if you take a look at the map, you can see that some of the legendary fish can only be caught in the New Austin and West Elizabeth area that currently is where Arthur's wanted dead or alive, making it nearly impossible for Arthur to catch those fish. So naturally, you would only be able to complete this if you made it to the epilogue and if you became John Marston. However, it is possible through some methods, I think either like a, a glitch getting Arthur into New Austin or like a save editor or something along those lines where you can actually manage to have Arthur collect all of the legendary fish. Now, on a side note and something completely unrelated, uh, after this happens, you get kicked out of Jeremy Gill's house. I wanted to see what was like inside or what he was doing uh, after we actually got this mission because he does like lock the doors behind him. And uh, when I went inside, he was just like standing in his bedroom. 
not doing anything, just like weirdly looking over his shoulder. So that's kind of interesting right there. You can't interact with him in any way, shape, or form. And this really isn't related to Arthur collecting all the legendary fish, but I did think it was an interesting sort of experiment. So now let's flash forward a little bit. So once you've collected all 13 legendary fish, you will get a message in the mail from Jeremy Gill. Now this is only supposed to go to John Marston. I've seen reports that even if you collect all the legendary fish as Arthur Morgan, you won't actually get this letter from Jeremy Gill, which is the trigger to actually start the final part of this mission. So once you've received this as John Marston, this is what's supposed to happen. Again, this is the normal outcome that's supposed to happen when you go to Jeremy Gill's house. A fan. Good timing. Do you have a camera? Sure. What are you talking about? Liars. Damn liars. Oh, you know, they're the liars. Hey, are you the guy that took the photos? I don't think so. Oh, must have been that fella from Quebec. I... Did you say you had a camera? Yeah. Good. You'll do then. What do you need? I found a giant catfish up near Frontera Bridge over in Rio Bravo. Isn't that out in the desert? Yes. And I'm going to catch it. And you are going to photograph me catching it. And then these bastards who call me a fake will discover who really catches these fish. You do, right? Well, you know, some of them. Listen, I know how to catch fish. Ah. <sighs> Come on. I don't want to go out to Rio Bravo. Ah, it'll be an adventure. Come on. I've got quite enough adventures. <sighs> I'll give you something you really love. <sighs> okay, then. Okay, so now that you know that, this is what would happen if you were to do this as Arthur Morgan. Now, this footage was actually captured by a user on Twitter and the GTA forums to Real Bandicoot. So full shout out and credit to him. I'll leave his Twitter in the description. He, at least to my knowledge, is the first person to attempt this and try this. So again, I'll leave a link to his Twitter in the description. He posts some really cool stuff, by the way. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, I would highly recommend you check it out. But anyways, this is what happens if Arthur Morgan goes up to Jeremy Gill to collect all the legendary fish. There you are. Did you bring your camera? Sure, but what are you talking about? Liars. Damn liars. Well, you know, they're the liars. Hey, are you the guy that took the photos? I don't think so. Oh, must have been that fella from Quebec. I... Did you say you had a camera? Yeah, but... Good. You'll do then. Uh, what do you need? I found a giant catfish up near Frontera Bridge over in Rio Bravo. Ain't that out in the desert? Yes, and I'm going to catch it. And you are going to photograph me catching it. And then these bastards who call me a fake will discover who really catches these fish. I catch them. Well, you know, some of them. Listen, I know how to catch fish. Ah, oh, come on. I don't want to head out to Rio Bravo. Ah, it'll be an adventure. Come on. I've got quite enough adventures. <sighs> I'll give you something you really love. Okay, then. Okay, so as you guys saw there, the lines of dialogue were different between Arthur and John, and that is really cool. Now, why is this unique, you might ask? Well, the reason for that is, is I think it further proves the fact that Arthur was supposed to go to New Austin at some point in time. Why else would these lines of dialogue be captured if there was no possible way that Arthur could get his way into New Austin? So here's what I'm thinking. At some point in the development of Red Dead Redemption 2, Arthur was going to be able to go to New Austin. Now, in what way could Arthur have gone to New Austin? That I'm not too sure. It might have been before the Blackwater Massacre, sort of like a prequel to Red Dead Redemption 2, or it might have been an entire rework of the main story where he doesn't pass away at the end of Chapter 6. And because of that, he would have been free to explore New Austin in the epilogue, potentially. I'm not sure how it would have worked, but this just once again proves the fact that Arthur was originally supposed to go to New Austin. Now, after finding out about this, I asked a real bandicoot if everything else in the mission finished out like normal. Because John and Jeremy Gill are supposed to travel to New Austin and apparently catch this legendary catfish 
And he said that the answer is yes, except there is no dialogue. So again, what I think that means is that Arthur going to New Austin was at some point in time going to happen, but probably cut during the development of Red Dead Redemption 2 because it seems as if there's pieces that are incomplete. However, as you guys know, at the very end of this mission, Jeremy Gill gets eaten by the legendary catfish. And uh, John sort of has a reaction that looks like this. Oh, come on, he's huge! Come on! Here, get this, get this! Here he comes, here he comes! Here comes him off! Oh, oh. My God. <sighs> well, apparently Rockstar recorded Arthur's reaction of Jeremy getting eaten by the legendary catfish too, because this is what he will say. So are there any major differences between Arthur and John turning in all of the legendary fish and going on this journey with Jeremy Gill? The answer is not really, other than some small dialogue tweaks. But what I think this means is it's just cool to see another example of the fact that Arthur was supposed to go to New Austin. And I don't know about you guys, but New Austin feels like almost sort of a leftover in Rockstar's eyes. Like, even if you consider all the other things in the game, like Easter eggs and strangers and, you know, chance encounters, most of them happen in the four main states. They really don't occur in New Austin, which, again, to me, seems as if Rockstar almost had New Austin as an afterthought. Or maybe they cut it sometime in development and then re-added it when John Marston was going to take over in the epilogue. I'm not too sure. But all I know is this is incredibly cool, and uh, I think this is a super unique thing to discover. But anyways, that's all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today. Hopefully, you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave a like rating on this video. That'd be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.